Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today I have four stories for you from the Malicious Compliance subreddit. Before we start that, all of my own commentary in this video today is brought to you by my friend in the comments, Treknut72, who had this to say on a previous video. Please go back to the old way you did things. Just read the story. Don't care about your opinions, but really like your voice. Thanks, Treknut72. Are you sure your name's not Karen? All right, on to the stories. Let's jump right in. This story comes to us from Octohand. Threatened to sue me? Go for it. First time posting here. Had a hard time deciding what subreddit to post this story to. Please let me know if this story is more appropriate somewhere else. Backstory. I have a five-year-old daughter with my ex-wife. We broke up about two and a half years ago. We had some ups and downs during our marriage. We never argued or fought per se, but we did negotiate a lot with strong emotions and opinions. Yet we always managed to find some common ground to stand on together. That's why it kind of caught me by surprise when she told me she wanted a divorce. I cried for a couple days, went fishing, and then started planning on how to figure things out because neither of us had enough income at that point to keep our car and or house. We agreed that I should take care of selling the car and she would get a realtor to start selling our home. Well, turns out I had to do both. Anyway, we had more debt than money and she tried to leave all the debt to me while she would start from a clean slate. I wouldn't let her and I made sure everything we owned and every bit of debt would be split evenly. We agreed that our daughter would live with both of us, splitting the time evenly, as our daughter had the right to having two parents. We promised each other to act civil. This didn't last long. We also had agreed that since our salaries were pretty even, neither of us would pay child support. We also agreed that she would take care of buying most of the clothes, etc. for our kid, since she would get the child benefit, about 100 euros a month here in Finland, paid by the government to support raising offspring. After the breakup, she started mail ordering new furniture for herself even before she had found a new apartment for herself. Kind of obvious, but she really didn't have the money for it either. Two weeks later, she moved out. A week later, I heard from our kid that she had a new man. I didn't really care, just raised some eyebrows. She would often call in sick to her work, usually BS reasons, and when her boss gave some feedback, she didn't fix her attitude, but instead, she just quit. She applied to a school, and she got in. After about two months, she quit the school too, and started demanding me to pay child support. We got a professional to weigh in, and agreed that I still wouldn't pay a dime to her, because she herself had caused her income to collapse. As a goodwill act, I offered to pay for our daughter's insurance. I thought the matter was settled, but then she got pregnant for her new man a few months after our breakup. After our divorce was final, there is a six-month reconsideration time before the judge calls it, she married her new man. These things empowered her into demanding for money again and again and again. So now you know what kind of person we're dealing with. The case. Last fall, she yet again demanded money to support our kid. She was working again, and I knew she used our kid as an excuse because she had expressed envy towards my ability to control my finances, to a point that even when I had the same amount of money, I could eat in restaurants, etc. I told her that if she needed child support for legitimate reasons, I would of course help, but all the expenses would have to be calculated properly to know the right amount she would need. Instead, she demanded I would pay her 200 euros a month, and she would take care of all the expenses regarding our daughter. She didn't have any real reasons for the demand other than her need for control. She had always been someone who wanted to have the last say in things. On top of her demand, this time she threatened to sue me if I didn't pay her. I pretty much laughed at it until I got a message from her lawyer. At that point, I messaged my ex telling her from now on, I would only discuss this matter via our lawyers and started looking for a lawyer myself. During the next couple months, things started to look really bad for her case. After getting the papers from the court, I noticed her case was based on false data. 
She and her lawyer hadn't asked for my income and expenses before they sued me, and she had estimated my income to be a lot more than it actually was. Also, my expenses were estimated to be smaller than actual. At this point, I messaged my ex and asked if she's sure she didn't want to settle. She said she didn't, so I decided to go with some malicious compliance and didn't try again. After we both calculated every income and expense of both parties with the help of our lawyers, I and my lawyer confirmed that she had enough money to raise our kid. Not only that, it turned out she actually had more money than me for it. Monthly income, minus living costs, medicine, etc, etc. I burst out laughing at the absurdity of her case, even more so when she tried to twist things to her favor by sending false evidence to us and the judge, which we noticed instantly. A couple days go by and my lawyer calls me. She had gotten a call from my ex's lawyer saying he had noticed my ex is lying and the whole case is based on lies and the lawyer wants to settle. It looked like my malicious compliance wouldn't go through until my lawyer got a message that for some reason, they won't settle after all. Game on. The judgment. We went to court. The judge was annoyed but composed. He asked my ex's lawyer about their demands. The lawyer started by saying, first, I'm going to tell a bit of the backstory. And the judge cut him off, telling him to just state the demands. After a few seconds of silence, the lawyer told the judge no demands. The judge was both dumbfounded and livid, asking, then why are we here? To which my lawyer said something along the lines of, that's what we're asking too. Then the judge asked my ex's lawyer, to be clear, didn't you want to settle? And the lawyer sheepishly told the judge that my ex wouldn't agree to settle. They were so embarrassed. It was so glorious like some kind of divine karma being served right at my Karen of an ex. The judge ordered us to go to a meeting room for 20 minutes and to come back with a settlement agreement. Because she had more money, we negotiated that she would pay for our kids' hobbies, insurance, etc. to compensate for the difference. The judge verified it, and my party left the courtroom very happy. My ex, on the other hand, was balancing between being angry and embarrassed. The fallout. A couple weeks ago, my ex demanded that we would make changes to the schedule on how our kid would swap homes. I declined, saying we have an agreement. She threatened to sue me, to which I just reminded her about the last time she wanted to get what she wants by suing me, asking if she really wants to do it again. She got mad, and I just ignored it. About a week ago, she sent me a message saying that she had a fight with her husband, Police were called because she attacked him and she wanted a divorce. The police had to inform Child Protective Services since there were kids present, mine included. Basically, her whole life has gone down the drain. Two kids, two different fathers, two divorces before she even turned 30. A lot of debt and expenses and looks like our kid will be spending the majority of her time at my place, which is what our kid has wanted for the past two-ish years. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Nanny Nanny Boo Boo. It says, Sounds like your divorce was a good thing for you. Maybe consider whether your child would be better off living with you and visiting the mother occasionally. OP responded to this one and said, Yep, I've never been happier. I also have a new wifey, not married yet, and my kid loves her new stepmom. Also, I'm seriously considering pursuing for our kid to stay here most of the time depending on the outcome of the CPS report. Another commenter down below called NickIs84 said, Careful OP, your ex is going to want to reconcile just to avoid paying child support and or becoming homeless. Of course, you're going to say no, but she's not in a good place. Might want to install some cameras as a precaution, just in case. OP responded to this one and said, Thanks, I have a few cameras recording outside our home 24-7. So, all good on that front. Does anybody else here think that the new guy on her end was whispering in her ear, Sue him. Sue him. Get all the money out of him you can. Because they had a fairly normal agreement when they broke up, but then a little while afterwards, she started going a little bit nuts and trying to get everything she could out of him. It sounds like OP has a good case for 100% custody, and if that happens, 
the one giving the money will be her to him for child support. Hmm, karma's a B, isn't it? This story comes to us from Maleficent Froyo 7336 This is a cute one. A few years back, my brother had married a walking power trip of a woman who had him by the short hairs. Everything was her way or the highway, and she could hardly be reasoned with. As an example, she called me up one morning at 5 a.m. to tell me my brother had been cheating on her, and her proof was junk mails in his inbox. You know the ones, this one trick will grow your eggplant. All the women will love you more. Or, do you like Russian women? Click here for Svetlana, she's waiting to meet you. And when I sent her a screenshot of my own inbox to show that I had that junk mail too, she blocked me on all social media and my phone number. So that's the kind of person we're dealing with. Don't get me started on when she uninvited me to their wedding for reposting a Humane Society PSA on my Facebook. And this control extended to his three young children. So my seven-year-old nephew was at my mom's house and playing in her rock garden. He had happily filled two sandwich bags my mom had given him with his favorite river rocks from the garden and was just pleased as punch. Well, his new stepmom told him he could only have one bag of rocks and that he had to choose. Now, for a little context, my brother's kids are not perfect little angels who get anything their little hearts desire, but it's just a bag of rocks. It doesn't do any harm, and mommy dearest in training had been a total nightmare all day. So the bags of rocks. My nephew was seven, and this just breaks his heart. She holds firm and demands that he only take one bag of rocks. So my mom went to comfort my nephew and tells him she'll help him fit his favorites in one bag. She ushered him inside and produced a quart-sized bag, dumps both bags of rocks into one bag. They both go back outside with one bag, and Mommy Dearest was incensed. My mom just smiled her sweet grandma smile and said, There, one bag of rocks. While my nephew delightfully remarked that he can fit even more now, since there is room in his new baggie. She didn't say a darn word. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Word Wizard X. It says, Not to take away from the story, but as a parent to two kids who used to fill their pockets with junk all the time, I would have absolutely required my kid to pare their fine down to one bag before going home. You'd be surprised how easily a child's room can fill up with utter trash and how much of a tantrum they can throw if you get rid of any of it. Making them choose what to keep up front helps them learn how to make those decisions later. Opie responded and said, Oh, I have no doubt. The random stuff they'll keep is insane. I totally agree with you. It's all about balance. I completely agree with this comment in that you don't want your kids filling up their room completely with junk. But I've got to side with grandma in this case. I think she's dealing with a daughter-in-law that has been a pain in the butt in the past and really doesn't want their kids to have any joy. Grandma sees that and wants to make the kid happy while making a little bit of a jab towards her daughter-in-law. I say good for you, Grandma. This story comes to us from Word Wizard X. Fine, I'll type it. This is an old one from back when I was in sixth grade and school computers were still in labs. There was a guy in my class I'll call Jason who was that certain breed of show-off common to the early 90s. The one who totally knows kung fu, but just can't show you right now. And who makes loud fart noises every time the teacher turns around. And is more concerned with belching the alphabet than with learning to spell. Unfortunately, one of my friends was dating Jason, as much as a sixth grader can. So he was always hanging around. We got to the dreaded five paragraph essay assignment and Jason showed up with a crumpled notebook page. He was a terrible typist and always asked me, the nerd of our group, to type up his work for him. I, being 12 and wanting to keep my friend happy, usually did it. For whatever reason, this essay was my last straw, so I typed it exactly as written, except instead of fixing his spelling as I went, I tried interpreting his terrible handwriting literally and as wrongly as possible whenever there was ambiguity. 
It was an unreadable mess. My friend was mad at me, but he never asked again. He also had been held back two grades by the time we turned 18 and is now a tractor salesman, so I guess he never needed that five paragraph essay anyway. <laughs> OP, I don't think you understand how much a tractor salesman can make, especially if they're working on commissions. You know, tractors can go for like two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and there's combines that can get up to close to a million. I'm guessing they're doing just fine for themselves, and you are poorly underestimating what that job entails. This story comes to us from Chaos of a Mad Hatter. Not so delicious, malicious compliance. Growing up, my sister and I were good students and got straight A's most quarters. As some parents like to do, ours rewarded us for it by taking us out to dinner each report card, and they alternated who would choose the location between the two of us. Now, when we went out to dinner, there were some rules that didn't make sense as kids. Like, if we ordered a cup of soup, we had to get a salad or sandwich, and if anyone, including our parents, got an appetizer, then we couldn't get dessert. There were a couple more nuanced things, but those were the big two. But they didn't apply if the meal came with any of those things. So every time it was my turn to pick, I would pick Golden Corral, and after quite a few times of suffering through the lackluster food, my mom finally demanded to know why I always wanted to go there. Because it's the only time I can get both a soup and a dessert when we eat, we were allowed to order dessert after that. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Eragathorak. It says, Those seem like pretty sensible rules to me as an adult. Get some solid food alongside the liquid for the first, and don't overeat and spend too much money for the second. Assuming whoever got the appetizer was also intended to share it with others, which is generally how it was in my family. That's pretty much why me and my siblings almost always chose an all-you-can-eat buffet whenever we had a chance to go out to eat. It was cheap, fully filled us hungry kids, and had a good variety of options. The quality was generally crap, but hey, when you have a big family and not a ton of money, you don't have many options. We usually defaulted to a local Chinese buffet over Golden Corral though, the food was so much better. OP responded and said, as an adult, I totally agree. As a kid, I was just more determined to figure out how to get the most bang for my buck and report card. I preferred the Chinese buffet, but my parents had very bland tastes, so that was off the table entirely. OP, your parents had more bland taste than an American Chinese buffet? My condolences to you, holy. OP did say in another comment that their mom fully admits that she didn't know how to cook until we grew up and left the house. I didn't know food could be better than McDonald's until I left the house either. Did you know that every KCC video is also produced in podcast form? You can search for Karma Comment Chameleon on every major podcasting platform. I thank you for watching and listening. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.